first 2000. Uh, is there any discussion, corrections? Anyone would like to enter into the minutes? Um, I noticed one correction. Um, my name is down as Christine, I believe, instead of Catherine. So I just moved to Certainly. change the name. Right. You get the closely. Um, I noticed a few uh, typos and maybe some words that uh, we should correct in the minutes before we approve them. Okay, I should go ahead. Um, on page 3, line 29, uh, the word D wood should be changed to C word, W A R D. Um, then the same correction on line 32 of that page, C wood, should be changed to C word. Um, on page 4, line 22, um, the last third of that line says, not were the last drop of salt. The word were should be where, W-H-E-R-E. -E. Um, on page six, line 23, it says the board accepts, E-X-C-E-P-T-S. I think that word should be accepts, A-C-C-E-P-T-S. Right. Um, on line 24 of that page, um, in the middle of the line it says there, T-H-E-I-R, should be T-H-E-R-E. -E. Um, I think that's all I know. Okay. Thank you, David. Does anyone else have any corrections they'd like to make? I hear a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to abstain since I recused myself, and uh, I think I probably should maintain that status of abstaining from uh, approving the minutes. Okay, fine, Bob. Uh, best of my knowledge, we have no old business, Bruce. Do we have any old business before the board? I no, we don't. don't believe so. so we move right ahead to the new business. And first piece of new business, to hear, to hear the request of Mark V. and Wendy W. Toothaker, Toothaker Road, tax map U16, lot 1, to relocate and enlarge an existing non-conforming structure at 17 feet 0 inches from Two Lights Road and 14 feet 0 inches from Wheeler Road. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of that? Why don't you come up to the podium, identify yourself, please. Um, my name is Mark Toothaker. I live at Two Wheeler Road, and I'm the owner of this property. Uh, we would like to request that we be allowed to move the house uh, off of town property. Uh, and I'm making this request for the second time uh, within the past year uh, because I made a mistake uh, on where my septic system was located uh, on my first request. And I had to. Uh, move it an extra six feet towards Two Lights Road to, uh, to stop from breaking into the leach field. So you're actually moving it six feet towards the corner there? Is that it? Yeah, we're going to move it six feet towards the left, uh, okay. looking, at the, uh, looking at the print. Um, which, okay. Uh, it's going to be this one here. Okay. It will be going closer to the two light section. Okay. Um, the mistake was made. I, had a, I have a three foot section of foundation that runs off the back of my house on the right hand side, the Wheeler Road side. And I intended to continue that straight out uh, and was told that it would cut into my leach field, and once I break into the leach field, you're not going to get it sealed again. I'd rather not have to have another one installed. Okay. Uh, so, that's the change. For those members of the zoning board who are new to this, 
This um, was an application that was approved last year for relocating the house. So we're asking, we're asking now for a modification to the relocation. Right. Correct. Modification and also an addition. Um, the addition is the garage. That's actually going to be um, where uh, part of the house used to be. Anyone on the board have any questions, Mr. Tuther? I just need some clarification on, on the distances. <clears throat> I'm looking at the um, second. This is not a boundaries survey page with the new setting on your lot. Can you help me with some of the dimensions, please? Um, on your sheet, you showed 17 and 14 feet setbacks from uh, Two Lights Road and Wheeler Road. Is that correct? Yeah. Is, that, is that what I'm looking at? Yeah. It looks greater. Uh, I'm using the scale of your garage of 16 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, would that distance from the point of that garage to the apparent right of way on Two Lights Road, would that be 17 feet? Um, actually, it would be less than 17 feet, where it sits now. No, I'm not, not saying where, where it sits now, where it, wh what you're proposing. Yes, it would be within that 17 foot barrier. It would be 17 feet. Yeah. All right, and 14 feet to the apparent right of way to Wheeler Road, that will be the, the garage. Yes, that hasn't really changed. Um, that's basically what it is right now. Okay. The board have any other questions for Mr. Tuthank? Yeah. Bruce, do you have a chair? I didn't treat this as a modification because um, because of the additional garage that he decided he would like to have on the, on the uh, on the project approved, and uh, also because it it was just easy to, to re-advertise okay. it as a new application. Okay, so it's a relocation and enlargement, really. So. Just. Just to, again, bring up the old application, what were the setbacks that we granted several months ago? Do you recall that, Bruce? Or does uh, the applicant recall what, I, what we granted? It was 24 feet uh, on the front, 14 feet on the side. So it was okay, so 24 feet from two lights, right? Yes. And, and actually what I've done is <laughs> I've given myself a little bit of leeway um, so that we can get as far away from that septic system as we possibly can. Okay, I just... I just need to know where that septic system is located. I, uh, I'm, I'm looking to see if I see a sheet with, with it marked out and I don't see there it. There is a, well... There's page three of the HEG 200 form in the packet. It's um, yeah, and I I was looking for a little clarification as to the location of it with the new setting right. as opposed question, to the old one. The question came in uh, came actually from uh, this right here. Mm -hmm. I do not have a septic tank pump, uh, so this plan isn't entirely correct. They were able to put a gravity feed system in when I had the new system installed. Um, and that's where the question uh, arises on whether or not I can break into that hill, uh, that, which is uh, measuring 37 feet back. I'm going to have to get real close to it yeah. by going with the 24 feet. Uh, and the contractor would prefer not to. All right. What I'm trying to establish is uh, the fact that you really cannot locate this any other place but what you have here before us. Exactly. Um, the 35 feet on the back, which is what we have to the back property line, um, would put the entrance to the new garage right over my tank, which wouldn't really work. I can appreciate your predicament. It's a very tight tight and difficult lot to work with. It sure is. Yep. 
Does anyone else on the board have any questions for Mr. Guthrie? I had a question on the garage. Is this a two-bay, single-story garage? Oversized one-car garage, single-story. One-car one garage, one-story. So there's no increase in the height of the proposal? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Toothick. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak either for or against this application? Public discussion is now closed, and the board may discuss this amongst itself. I just have a question to clarify. Okay, go ahead. What we're being asked to approve with regard to the setbacks. Um, I don't see anything on here that actually gives the setbacks to show where the new location will be. On the application, uh, if you look down at the bottom of the application for a setback reduction, it, it lists the distances from Wheeler and, and two lights. The 17 feet is from two lights, the 14 feet is from Wheeler? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else on the board have any discussion? Joe? No. Stephen? Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to determine the distances from the corners of the garage to the apparent right away on Wheeler Road. And once again, I um, I think Tony brought it up as well as the distance from the corner of the garage to two lights road. It's not indicated anywhere in any of the drawings. And, and does that meet the, the required setbacks? I do believe, after I'm talking to Mr. Tuthiko, that, that the 17 feet and the 14 feet are the closest points of, of the structure to the, to the rights of way. Um, I probably should have had him actually put that on the drawing. And I will in, in the future make sure the application does have that. And, and the tank and the leach bed, I'm assuming they're going behind where the proposed garage is. Can you point out where? Towards the top of your lot. They already exist. <clears throat> yes, please. I'm thinking it's up here. Is that correct? Okay. Any more discussion? Yeah. Board? I'm just trying to find out what the uh, 20. I'm reading the ordinance. It says uh, on page uh, 36. Uh, that's a chance to find it. Uh, the change expands the, t the total floor area devoted to the non conforming use by less than 25% over the lifetime of the structure. Not, this is not a non conforming use. Okay. This is what's been cited as 1943B. Is it 194? Okay. Is this relocation? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, 35. All right. That's why I'm confused. Anyone else have any discussion while Bob's reading? Mm. Bob, do you have any more questions? No, okay. I think he's satisfied. Okay, we'll call close the discussion. Um, anyone would like to make a motion relative to this application? Would you like to go down through the reasons and the conclusions with the applicant? Um, it's on the draft. Yeah, the draft um, document calls for us to examine the, these conclusions that the building relocation does not meet the setback to the greatest practical extent due to the following. A, the size of the lot. B, the slope of the land. C, the potential for soil erosion. 
be the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties. We have two Ds here, uh, Bruce. Uh, I'll call D1 and D2. D2 is the location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable for septic systems. E is the impact on views. F is the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. I mean, they may or may not all apply. But right. I think you ought to conclude which ones do. So, um, so any motion that's made to approve or deny should refer to these criteria, one or more of these criteria. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, I'll move um, that we accept the application of uh, Mark and Wendy uh, Toothaker. Uh, for a setback reduction and relocation of property at Two Wheeler Road, uh, map U16, lot one. Um, and that we find that the relocation uh, does not meet the setback to the greatest practical extent due to um, the size of the lot and the location of the septic system. Um, it seems to me that the slope of the land is inapplicable. The potential for soil erosion is inapplicable. The location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties is inapplicable. Does that apply to the uh, septic system also? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it appears that the impact on views is inapplicable, and it appears that the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation is also inapplicable um, as a factor to be considered. Um, and as um, I would include as part of the motion that the uh, closest um, setback uh, to Two Lights Road uh, be 17 feet and the closest setback to Wheeler Road be 14 feet as included in the application. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. have one comment. Yep. Was the slope of land an issue too? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like to ask you if you'd like to perhaps consider amending the motion to include the finding of fact number two so explicitly as part of the motion, too. Yes, um, I will. Um, I'll amend the motion um, to include uh, a finding that the relocation and enlargement will not increase the uh, nonconformity of the structure. Second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries six to zero. Next order of business is to hear the request of L. P. Murray and Sons, twelve thirty Shore Road, tax map U eleven, lot fifteen, to relocate, replace, and enlarge an existing non conforming use by twenty three percent as allowed by Article 4, Section 19-4-3, C.3 of Chapter 19, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this motion? John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, <clears throat> and we represent uh, L.P. Murray and Sons. The, uh, the proposal uh, is for the construction of a 1,536-foot uh, single-story wood frame structure uh, located at the rear of uh, the property. 
basically it is to replace uh, an existing structure located uh, in this location, uh, which is used as a repair service garage. The existing building, uh, it, it's, it's basically the reason why uh, Mr. Murray is is the existing building is in uh, very bad condition. Uh, it's basically worn out. It was built in the 30s. Uh, it is a very difficult um, building to, uh, it's become very inefficient, <clears throat> difficult to heat, difficult to uh, maneuver large vehicles in and out of the building. It's also within uh, 10 feet of the rear setback, uh, rear property line, which is uh, in uh, violation of the setback uh, requirement. The new building, which is, uh, as the chairman said, is 23% larger than the existing building, which is permitted by your ordinance um, for a relocation or replacement. We're allowed uh, up to 25% increase in uh, square footage. It uh, is located, as you can see, next to uh, and beside the existing structure. Uh, once this is completed, the existing structure will be uh, raised. It is, uh, <coughs> there's uh, a much better rear setback. Uh, it's approximately 40 feet from the rear property line. Um, and it will be designed in accordance with the town center uh, district standards. Uh, there is no increase in pavement or impervious surface or use uh, related to the, to the new structure. Essentially, it's to replace an existing old uh, deteriorated building. <coughs> uh, in our submission, uh, we've described how the use uh, will conform to the standards listed in, in your application. I'll just briefly go through those, if I may. <coughs> Uh, it's listed it in, uh, under attachment A in your packet. Uh, the answer to uh, A is, is yes, the applicant will agree to any, uh, any reasonable conditions uh, that the board may impose. With regard to traffic conditions, uh, <coughs> as I stated, there is there's no increase uh, in uh, use no change in use, there's no uh, uh, increase in the number of employees, therefore there won't be any impact on existing traffic. With regard to sanitary disposal uh, or air emissions, uh, there will there'll be no impact on the sanitary disposal system. Uh, there's no production uh, related to this, this use. Uh, the only air emissions will be the occasional of vehicles uh, when they're being serviced. With regard to the value of adjacent properties, um, the removal of the existing structure in the construction of the new structure uh, will certainly have a positive impact uh, to both the adjoining and surrounding properties. Question E, uh, with regard to compatibility, uh, the existing property has been a residence, and an office, uh, and a repair facility uh, since the 30s. Uh, its location within the town district center uh, is in an area that uh, encourages commercial and service businesses. And uh, for this reason, it, it uh, is compatible with the surrounding land uses and in conformance with the comprehensive plan. And finally, the, uh, uh, the design of the structure, as I mentioned, is in accordance with the, uh, the town uh, center district standards. Uh, the facility has been uh, designed uh, with respect to the scale, the proportions, the roof lines, the materials, the fenestrations, all in accordance with the, uh, the district standards. So, uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, just a, a side note, we have been to the planning board uh, in a workshop session, and uh, although they have not acted on this application yet, they are uh, in 
basically in, in favor of this uh, in favor of this proposal. Uh, Skip is here, and we'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. You on the board have any questions? Joe? Two questions, partially answered. This does go to the planning board, Bruce, for for review of the uh, the structure itself. Yes. And all we're doing is granting the uh, setback reduction in this case. The, there's, there's no setback issues. The setback, the, 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 the building will be become non will become conforming to setbacks. Okay. Other question is: You verified the fact that the the existing building is 12, uh, 1,247 feet? Yes. You verified that number? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's not, this is not a variance request. It's a request to relocate, replace, and enlarge an existing non-conforming use. Does anyone on the board have any other questions for Mr. Mitchell? I'd like to know if there is any residential property w which abuts this property. No. Mm -hmm. uh, how large is this acreage that's in this commercial unit? The acreage is 1.1. I didn't see it. I couldn't find it. Okay. We have had a uh, boundary and topographical survey done. Uh, the coloring on the map, is that the current um, grass and trees, or are grass and trees being added to what's currently there? Everything shown in, uh, yes, I mean, th this is all this is all grass around the residence. Uh, as you know, the the, um, the pile of sand is located in this in this area here. Um, this is all gravel drive. This is a paved drive. This is a gravel service area here, parking for the vehicles. Um, and this will become grass. This is the area okay. where the a building will be removed and uh, will become grass. And the, the, the trees are all existing. OK. Um, there are no new plantings. So where the current building is, as well as the area in front of the current and the new building, will all be grass? There's a question, uh, Skip, I don't know if you want to answer this, but uh, this is currently on a slab right now, and, and there's some thought of maintaining that, that slab in place once the structure is removed. Um, how would that sit, Bruce, with replacement if the slab remains? Uh, Depends on the use of the slab. Okay. It's a gray area, but if it's used for parking, uh, then it wouldn't be a structure. But if it's used for something else to support some kind of a structure, then it would be, it should be removed. Okay. What, what would be a permitted use if the slab <coughs> remained? Just parking? That's probably about it. And that, that would have to be reviewed by the planning board to see if it was OK. I don't know what their reaction would be to that. So Bruce, would that be a condition the zoning board might consider attaching to an approval? That that slab, if it's retained, be restricted to parking only? Yes, that's something you could do, sure. I mean, they wouldn't be allowed to put a basketball hoop up on it. And yeah. I think it's clear that, that, that the swap will, will take care of the issue of, of not being be able to use for a structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think anybody, anything could ever be built on, on it at a future date. I, I always have concerns with, with a slab situation right. remaining because theoretically there's a still a footprint issue there. Exactly. No volume, but right. so I always have reservations when people want to leave 
things like that. Yeah. Especially when it's a swap. So would you be comfortable if we placed a rest uh, uh, restriction of use on that to parking? That lay your concerns? Um, it might be better to just say that the approval is based on the fact that that, that area will not be used for structures. Um, because I'm not sure the planning board is going to be willing to, to allow parking back there anyway. So, you know, that's something they'll probably depend on. Did you discuss that with them at all? Yes. I, I believe we did discuss that. Yeah. They had no problem with it? And when we make our submission to the planning board, if in fact that's what Skip wants to do, we'll label it as parking. So there won't be any question. Either, you know, I, I'm not concerned any, any I think the, the records will clearly show what, what happened here anyway, so I don't mm -hmm. know that it needs to. Yeah, my only concern would be, my, I don't have a current concern or with the current ownership, but if that was, the property would have changed ownership or something like that, I don't, I'd have some concern that there might be some question of whether another use was grandfathered. Well, the use and in, in, in the non-conforming use and the non-conforming structure are two different things. We should try to keep them separated. Um, right. The records will clearly show that that structure has been removed, and, and, and that in order to put that back, uh, someone would have to go before the for this board for a variant setback, anyways, because it would now be uh, a non-conformance that couldn't be brought back. So I don't. I don't think. From my standpoint, I think it's an issue that can be easily tracked and, and taken care of. Yeah, I, I, in my mind, I was just wondering, I think what you say is true as far as replacement of a structure, an up, a vertical structure, but I suppose there's some conceivable uses of a slab that might go beyond parking that might be a more intensive use of that than would be, would be uh, anticipated. I have no problem with that, make, okay. you know, making a condition that that'd okay. be parking. That's not a problem. Anyone else on the board have any questions? The See? proposal doesn't represent a change of use in the activity that's currently occurring there. That's and correct. since you're using it to service your vehicles, is that correct? Just our own it, yeah, th there is no commercial application to that other than servicing your own fleet. You wouldn't be doing com taking in vehicles for repair. Right. Catherine, any questions? David? No, I don't. I have one other question. I noticed that they had put up stockade fence, which can be seen from um, the town hall area. What would your thoughts be about putting some stockade fence on the community center side of it to more thoroughly, to basically close off from view your yard? It should be on the community side all the way down. It, yeah. it is? Yeah. Fence is currently. Uh, all the way down. Okay. The proper line. That that line with the yep. squares along it. I see. That's the stockade fence. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that looked attractive. Bob, you have any questions? I'm fine. Is there anyone else would like to speak on behalf of this application? Anyone would like to speak against this application? If that be the case, and public discussion is closed, and if the board has any discussion it would like to do amongst itself, now is the time for it. I guess my only concern is it, it, do we want to put any kind of conditional use restrictions on this? Well, it's a conditional use decision relative to a non-conforming mm -hmm. building. Do we want any performance guarantees? Do we want restricted access, uh, access restrictions? I don't know. Size of, uh, I don't know, hours of use? Size of what, Bob? Hours of use is, uh, it, it, this is a commercial enterprise. Uh, it's not like it's an industrial park. No, it's um, 
in an existing commercial area. Mm -hmm. What's attractive about it, there are no residences abutting the property where, for, for, the, for the late hours of use which might occur, it's not conceivable that too many people will be disturbed by it. Questions or discussion on the board? I don't see where the um, additional restrictions are necessary at this point. If there aren't anybody really seeking them, I think I'm satisfied with what they've put together so far. Okay. Well, the question is perhaps whether we have the authority to add restrictions later, and we probably don't. I, I would think not. I would think now's the time. Now's the time. That and my sentiments are kind of nobody's really <coughs> imposing restrictions. I think it, we shouldn't restrict their property unnecessarily. And since nobody's advocating today for those restrictions, I say we give them the benefit of using their land that I see as in conformance with what the conditions that they've set forth. If we approve this without conditions, is there anything that would prevent a new owner in the future um, from using the garage for? commercial use for the service of other vehicles. You mean the slab or the garage? No, not the slab, the garage. Right, so, okay. Could that type of activity occur? In, as part the the non-conforming use would be limited to somebody that's got a similar operation that would want to want to repair their own vehicles. Uh, if, if, if it would have to be similar in nature as far as time in the whole nine yards, you couldn't have somebody come in there that that had a more intensive, that ran vehicles 24 hours a day. Um, you know, I think that would be an expansion of the non-conforming use. It, the non-conforming use can remain as long as it doesn't expand hours of operation and, 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 and the like, or more employees um, at the service garage. Um, and that isn't such a bad, bad thing to, for the board to establish that the use of this now for the record. Uh, so that so that it's understood that it can't expand beyond that, or somebody else couldn't. Well, I think the one thing that would be, uh, it seems that their restriction now is that you're only servicing your own vehicles, your own fleet. And if we were able to put that succinctly in a condition, I think that would give them the flexibility they need to make sure they're getting their job done while protecting. Um, I think that if we were, if the property was ever to be sold and another use was to come in, it certainly would increase where they would be servicing other vehicles. Certainly the traffic would be increased. Um, it's possible that the emission of air would be an, an issue. So it would see that just simply looking at this quickly, there would be different things that would affect if we were to change hands on the property. <laughs> Bob, do you have any more questions? I was just, I want to make sure I'm reading the right uh, uh, statute here, the uh, provision. This is on page 36, enlargement? Yes. Okay. Uh, it says on the last, next to the third to the last line, the expansion shall be limited to the minimum necessary to accomplish this purpose, that purpose. Uh, let's see. Referring to the. Uh, is that an issue, Bruce? Well. What they're proposing is 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 uh, a garage that will, that, that, that will be big enough in size to easily uh, bring the trucks in. Uh, right now, they're really it's really tough to be able to bring it in there and close the door and for the for the, for the repairman to stay warm. So mm -hmm. I believe it's a you know from my standpoint, it's it's a reasonable request. Uh,
when a business, actually a structure is sold, in most cases a real estate agent or a buyer will come to you and ask what can be, what can be, what type of business can be carried on or basically would get approvals from you to do this. If someone bought that without that type of uh, investigation and you noticed it, basically you could shut them down. I'm talking the expansion of a business, whether whether there, you know someone came in and operated it uh, in, in service trucks for other people in the town. That certainly would be an expansion of the use That's of correct. that bill. But you are basically the watchdog of that, aren't you? Whether he does it or whether it's sold and it's done. I've got a good view from my window, too. Yes, you do. Um, and I think that there's been other cases where people have done something they weren't supposed to, and there's certainly a few watchdogs out in the community that limited what went on, and they came before us. Some were happy, some weren't. Uh, but I think that the policing action is the code enforcement officer's responsibility and not, and not this board. Even if we put some type of limitation as to what can be done, Mr. Smith is still going to have to enforce it. So I, I have faith that he's going to be able to keep an eye on, on this property and limit what goes on. Thank you. Bruce, is, is the number of employees a, con, a part of the um, restrictions on this conditional use? I, I, I believe that, that if, if Mr. Murray is, is suggesting that there's one full-time employee that works in the service in the, the garage, yeah. excluding the people that meet the equipment there, which right. is the normal process yeah. anyways, that I would, I would think that, that the records could establish that that's what he has now and it can continue. Um, mm -hmm. That's a reasonable... Um, because that, the, way it's, the way the application reads now, does that become a formal part of the approval? Under the conditions of approval, you could list. Um, I'm not suggesting that we should. I'm just asking whether we could. Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Mr. Murray certainly has, has the right to establish for the record his use at this point. And we, none of us can take that away from him because he, he's, in, he's, he's a grandfather non-conforming use. Right. But you certainly can make it clear for the record that that's what he brought forth and that's what you're going to continue the approval on. That's sometimes the problem with trying to enforce non-conforming uses is that the record does not clearly that's why indicate what took place. And people can tell me that it, that it that the place has grown over the years, but without looking in the record and have something firm to go on, I can't, I can't do anything about that. Uh, unless somebody has, you know, somebody brings affidavits forth. That is, however, part of the record, though. We, we've stated in question B that there is one mechanic who devotes approximately 50 percent of his time. <clears throat> Any more discussion amongst the board? I guess my concern is that the downside, and maybe we should have a performance guarantee if, if people start putting old cars they want to fix up, it becomes, want of a better term, a, a junkyard. I'm not saying the applicant would do this, but uh, it's not uncommon for auto mechanics to, to buy you know, a car to fix up for one reason or another. And I, I've seen a number of uh, repair facilities where cars are left indefinitely and sort of fixed up on the side. So I'm not saying that I need, I think this is a big thing, but perhaps a performance guarantee that uh, this, this property is not used for the storage of, uh, of, of, of vehicles not, uh, not associated with the business being on. Um, in exhibit, attachment A, paragraph B, um, 
The repair shop, that has a connotation to me that it's, you're in the business of repairing other vehicles. I was wondering if anyone else yeah. finds that, yeah. that. If that's the case, maybe we could just tailor this a little bit to be maybe more appropriate. Um, maybe not the word is repair shop, maybe it's repair structure. Or repair. Well, you can either include any wording you'd like as far as clarification of that in, the mo in a motion or an amendment to the motion, either one, if you'd like to. Okay. I'll make a motion then that the uh, application for uh, the application of L.P. Uh, Murray and Sons uh, for conditional use uh, to enlarge an existing non-conforming structure of the property at 1230 Shore Road uh, be approved whereas because the board finds that the proposed use expansion will not create hazardous, hazardous traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic vicinity, in its vicinity, that the uh, board finds that the proposed use and ex uh, use expansion will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or other aspects of its design or operation. Uh, the proposed use of the expansion will not adversely affect the value of the adjacent properties. The next one should be four. The proposed site plan and layout are compatible with the adjacent property use and the comprehensive plan. And that the design and external appearance of uh, any proposed buildings will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to the neighborhood. Uh, subject to the conditional approval that the facility uh, not be allowed to uh, become a storage site for uh, other vehicles not directly involved, uh, not directly uh, in the ownership of the uh, applicant. I'd make one, one correction at the beginning. It uh, said non conforming structure, it's non conforming use. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll amend my proposal. Can okay. we vote on whether or not that this is compatible with the comprehensive plan, or is that the planning board's job? I know we have to test the but can we make that conclusion at this point? Um, you can certainly examine that. Um, and I think it's, we can attach any conditions we want, but I'm not sure that the zoning board makes any legal decisions relative to whether it's compatible with the comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan is the guide for the zoning regulations. Oh, zoning I'm thinking of the community plan. I'm, I'm thinking of something different. Okay. I'm sorry, you're right. I think we have to find that it's compatible with the comprehensive plan. So. No, I was thinking of the, the, the town. Um, I was thinking of something okay. different. Mm -hmm. Strike that. Yeah, but I'm addressing Jack's concern that I, that's part of what we have to find to, to, uh, to approve the uh, applicants, the application. Well, the zoning, the, on the state mandate, the zoning regulations are drafted in conformance with a comprehensive right. plan. So that's, what, that's what's our primary guide. But if this were a residential neighborhood, then, or we wanted to keep it, uh, then you couldn't, then allowing a commercial enterprise into it would, would, would violate that provision. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Correct. So we're finding that it doesn't violate the, uh, the uh, comprehensive plan uh, design for which this property is, uh, is, is, is designed or zoned, I guess I should say. What's the, what's the condition? In addition that uh, the site not be, is a performance guarantee that the site not be uh, used for the storage of vehicles other than those directly used by the applicant. Would you um, accept, Bob, an amendment to your motion that um, as part of the condition, the uh, new structure be used um, solely for the service and repair of the owners own vehicles um, and for other reasonable and necessary uses ancillary to the service and repair of the owner's own vehicles. I think that's very, very well stated. And I think that captures what, what I'm trying to get at. Then I'd make that amendment. Okay. If I accept, it, accept, it. accept it as a friendly amendment. I don't know if my motion's been seconded, but that's it. I, I have a I have a concern with that. When you talk own his vehicles, are you limiting that to just vehicles that he that he owns himself, or vehicles that he may lease that are part of the business? That's a good point. 
I, mean, I, I wouldn't limit it to just the vehicles that he owns. It may be some, some lease vehicles or rented vehicles that are, that are an integral part of his business. Well, I, I don't think you're going to store your employees' vehicles there. You can park them. There's a difference between parking and storage. I think the concern you were trying to address was that it not become a general service facility right. for vehicles not related I to the business. I think David's amendment uh, covers that. Yeah. Um, I think we could probably restate it to say that it would be limited, um, the use would be limited for the Secure. service and repair of vehicles used in conjunction with the owner's business um, and for all other reasonable and necessary uses ancillary to the service and repair of vehicles used in conjunction with the owner's business. As a procedural matter, I, I would suggest that we vote on the conditions uh, separately uh, to, before they're added to the main proposal and then figure out what's voted up and voted down and then vote on the proposal as a whole. It seems to work out better. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, we'll, we'll uh, take a vote on the conclusions. You're talking about, Bob, conclusions. Yeah after the findings of fact here. Um, we'll hear a vote on the conclusion one, the proposed use expansion will not create hazardous traffic conditions and add it to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All those in favor, approving that? Six to zero. The proposed use expansion will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All in favor? Six to zero. The proposed use expansion will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All those in favor? Six to zero. The proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those in favor? Six to zero. The design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to let me rephrase that. The design and external appearance of the proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. All those in favor? Six to zero. Um, I think we probably should have a similar vote on the amendment that was attached right. to that. And so Leslie, can you read the final wording of the amendment as proposed? <laughs> okay. Let me, My amendment? David, yeah. why don't you, rest, could probably why don't you restate the restate amendment? Um, the, the amendment uh, is that the uh, use of the uh, new building be restricted to the service and repair of vehicles used in conjunction with the owner's business and for all other reasonable and necessary uses ancillary to the service and repair of vehicles used in conjunction with the owner's business. Okay. All those in favor of that amendment language? Raise your hands. Joe, you want to make a comment? Go I was going to ask, was that motion uh, seconded? I second the motion. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That, just, just a point of clarification. Are we unable to discuss that motion? No. <clears throat> no. We can discuss it. Well, I feel that we're placing restrictions on his personal use of that property. For instance, if he were to wish to repair one of his own vehicles, are we restricting that? Or if he, for instance, he wanted to repair one of the tractors he rides in, one of those antique tractors, are we preventing that? type of activity? I think if somebody files a complaint, you have, you have a legitimate basis to, to issue a cease and desist order if this gets out of hand. Well, that's what my concern is. I, d I don't want to restrict that because I think it's a reasonable use of, of the uh, 
of his own personal property. Right. Let me let me uh, just technical point. The public discussion period is closed, so technically you should not be speaking from the floor unless someone on the board asks that the public discussion period be reopened. Right. Alternate. What if we were to propose instead of just saying the owner's business, it's the owner's um, personal use or business? And that would then open it up to his own use, which is should be inherent, and as well as his business use. I think the one thing, something the, the board should be conscious of is that that uses to the existing residential structure that's on the lot are permitted. Right. Uh, so that that garage, although it may be used principally as a non-conforming use for repair, that 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 as a permitted use accessory to the residential situation, that things like Skip's toys could easily be worked on there, and there's no violation. Um, that clears it up. One Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Is there any other discussion on the proposed amendment? Okay, it, let's. It, it, it's a it's a reform. Okay, uh, I don't know if it's an amendment. It's a it, it, it's a condition of approval. Uh, and it, it, it's I think it comes under the heading of performance guarantee. Well, I'm not sure legally what the significance of the words performance guarantee are. I think that that requires a certain amount of bond be put forward by the. Applicant. Usually, that's that's the performance guarantee is based on. Upfront money to make sure right. the project is completed was, was, was in a timely and yeah. orderly fashion. Certainly, can make it a condition of approval, though, Bob. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I, I'm trying to. Think. There are there are seven possible conditions of approval here: uh, all street improvements, access restrictions, the hours of use, buffering, screening, mm -hmm. uh, access restrictions would come under Bruce. I mean, you don't necessarily have to categorize it. You can just yeah. put it as okay. a condition of approval. Um, yeah, the board can make any conditions. It right, doesn't right. have to be categorized by those seven examples. Okay, um, who has the final language for the amendment? David, do you want to read it or <laughs> restate it for the best of um, Am I being asked to modify it from the way it was last no. stated and seconded? No. Yeah. No. no. Do we need to restate it? Oh, well, I want to restate it for the purpose of Leslie having it. Well, we got it on the tape. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, let's, we will vote. I, I want you to understand, when we vote on these conclusions, one, two, three, four, five, these are, these are not the final vote. These are sentiment of the board on each of these elements. There will be a final vote on the application, and you can vote on that, no matter what you, how you voted on each of these conclusions. So these are more or less to determine the board's sentiment on each of the conditions or conclusions. So I will ask for a, a similar vote on the language of the amendment. All those supporting that language in the amendment, please raise your hands. Vote is six to zero. Okay, uh, this time we'll vote on approval of the application itself. Uh, all those in favor of approval of the application, please raise your hands. Vote is six to zero, and the application is approved. Thank you. That concludes the hearing of new business before the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting tonight. Um, Bruce, do we have any communications? No. Okay. Does any member have any communications to bring before the board? Hearing none, meeting's adjourned. Well, I, I did want to, uh, those of you who've read the uh, Armstrong's appeal, I think there's something instructive on that basis that we should consider. One of the things the Armstrong's objected to was the way that the uh, process was conducted. Technically speaking, it, it was between Bruce and the appellant. And According to the case law they cited, it was incumbent upon Bruce to come before the board and state the reasons why he ruled as he did, and then give the appellant a chance to respond to that. Uh, when he sits up here with the board, he's acting in an advisory capacity, which is right. When he himself is the object 
of the uh, appeal, that his decision is being appealed, then I think that the sense, the, the, what, the atmosphere of fairness dictates that he sort of come before the board and state why he found what he did and then give the applicant a chance to respond. And I think that in the, in the future, that might be, uh, given the case law cited by the Armstrongs, that that might be a better way to conduct appeals of his decisions. Well, I, I think that legally, um, the applicant, or in this case, the um, Armstrongs who are asking the application to return, they are applying to the town for a reversal of a, of a decision by the town. Um, the zoning board is making the decision on behalf of the town, and Bruce is staff of the zoning board and an employee of the town uh, that has the responsibility for that decision. So he does have a special stature in this, and I don't think that it's in the town's interest to request Bruce to retreat to a stature identical to the applicant, because he's really representing the town as far as that decision yeah, goes. Yeah, and, and the town comes before us, too, to ask for uh, zoning variances, and it has. If, I'm, if I may, if, if, if that was if what Bob is saying, then, then everything that comes to you basically is a appeal of my decision not to issue a permit. Right. Variance is the whole night. No, yards. You, you issued one. Uh, somebody has to have but, a variance. But, 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 but so. my, my decision is always the one that's being challenged in a good many cases. It's not because there isn't staff in every town, it's the same situation where the Board of Appeals actually sets with the board. I mean, that's common practice to set at the podium or at right. a peer to, to be able to have access to the mic right. um, for ease of communication. I mean, and that's all it is, is ease of communication. Right. I don't know how that would work if, if I had to get up and down from a chair constantly. Well, I, I think that legally, you and we are the town for the purposes of hearings before this board. Yeah, see, I disagree with that because the town is subject to the, to the zoning laws, too. The town, could, the town couldn't build a, uh, a garage in a residential area. Excuse me, Jack. Did we officially uh, adjourn? There was no vote taken. There was no vote taken? It did not happen. Do we want to adjourn to executive session to discuss this, or do you want this to be part of the record? No, it's not appropriate that we adjourn to executive session. For discuss. We can discuss it in open session. It is a procedural matter. Well, and I, and I think if there's questions, then I think you, you should defer a conversation until you can have a, the town attorney to sit down with you to guide you, uh, because we're, we're not, you know, nobody's, this is new territory you're bringing up, Bob. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm looking at the, the Armstrong's complaint on uh, item let me, Excuse me, Bob, let me just, Joe, I didn't mean to cut you off, but legally we cannot ex adjourn to an executive session without our council being present, okay? That's, that's a guideline that governs our adjournment to executive session. And we probably should have him at every meeting in case the situation arises. Well, well we, when we need to. At meetings when we think that might be a possibility, we do that. Well, here's an, here's an example right now. Maybe we should adjourn to, <laughs> to discuss this, to set guidelines to, uh, uh, to follow in the future. We can all this in a workshop. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's open to the public. Yeah. But certainly the comments made by the Armstrongs are, are worth reading and, and considering and to improve the way we operate. I think there are some comments in there that we should pay special attention yes. to in terms of, um, uh, and this is something that I have been guilty in in the past myself. I think we should try to present our questions to any applicant as emotionless as possible. And even if we're feeling a certain amount of annoyance or whatever at um, an applicant's uh, presentation, a posture before the board and, their, and the way they've carried out their part of the procedure, I think um, it's very useful for us to try to keep that to ourselves internally and not express it outwardly to the applicant or to anyone else while we're sitting as a board. Yeah, I think that's one thing that um, uh, that, that appeal referred to, uh, feeling that they were subject to prejudicial yeah. treatment. 
Yeah, I'd like to maybe address Bruce's concern that everything, that, that all decisions are appealed. Yes, yeah, somebody can appeal his decision, but if somebody asks for variance, they accept his decision. If somebody asks for a conditional use, they accept his decision. Now, they could also appeal that no variance was necessary. Now, that would be an appeal of his decision. Once they uh, apply for any of these uh, customary things that we rule on, nobody's questioning his decision because they made an application based upon the fi his findings, and they're not questioning the decision. They're asking for variance or, or conditional use. Uh, so that's, I don't think they're always questioning Bruce's decisions. I think there are cases where they do question his decisions. And I think it's, it gives the appearance of, it's like having a prosecutor sit next to the judge. It, you know, he's got to make his case, and according to the, the case law cited, that's his function. He's he got to tell the board why he found his, what, what, what he did. And then the person who's appealing his decision can, has a chance to refute that. And the Armstrongs never saw they tell me the picture of the high watermark uh, on which you base your decision. Now I say, gee, that's are we throwing ourselves open here to uh, a long legal process? So I think Bruce has to make his case before us, and and the appellant has to uh, make her case. We made it a, a, a debate between uh, the, the two property owners, when in fact, according to the case law cited, the appellant was appealing Bruce's decision. And it just gives, I think it gives the impression of fairness to do it that way. We are not the town, we are a judicial body. The town is bound by its own laws. It cannot, we, we don't represent the interests of town, we represent the, uh, the, uh, the, zoning, uh, uh, the zoning ordinances. We interpret them and we apply them. And the town is subject to those, uh, to, to those ordinances as well as anybody else. Bruce? I can only tell you that, that, that what I know of, of the history of, of code enforcement and, and the towns that I've worked with, I've been in code enforcement for 12 years, four boards. I also sat on a board of appeals mm -hmm. at, currently in, a, in my hometown. Um, it's common practice for the, for, the, for the code enforcement officers to sit with the board acting in his capacity as a code officer and not as a member of the board. Mm -hmm. Um, and nobody's ever challenged that. If we if we carried through Bob's argument, then and her point in the in the, in the affidavit uh, goes as far as me not writing the draft, me not writing the final. That's right. Maybe me not even talking to them and guiding them. So if I don't do it, and that's the problem with every town. If you don't, if if the code officer doesn't handle that situation, you're going to have to hire somebody from the outside. Right. And it's never been a problem with, with anybody I've worked with, nor have I ever been on a case, and I've had plenty of appeals of my decision, um, and, and situ situations that I've already issued permits, and, and it's never been an issue. So I just want to pass that on to the board that, that um, because one appellant thinks that's an issue, that doesn't mean it's an issue. Mm -hmm. But you can see the John the Armstrong's legitimate concern that you're sitting up here. You're first acting as an advisory to the board when she is appealing your decision to judicial. I heard. You're an executive of the town. We are a judicial agency. You is it, you're here by and large to advise the board. Uh, but when you're the object of the appeal, then I, I, I think it just looks bad. I'm I think that we probably should hold off on this discussion, given the fact that this is now an appeal. Yeah, no, it, it, I'm not coming on the substance of it, but just this procedural matter for future reference. But part of this appeal is, I think, based on the procedure that we use. Yeah. Um, so it may not be the best idea for us to be talking about this at this point. Maybe this is something we yeah. obviously need to address at some point, so maybe we let this appeal take its course. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. Specifically in the context of the pending appeal, I think that it's inappropriate for us to go into this in any okay. further detail. And that's why I cast in terms of the future. Okay. Okay, I'll hear a motion for adjournment. Second. So moved. All in favor? Second it. Please adjourn.